I'm going to show you something about wave characteristics in this video. And we're going to talk about wave fronts, rays, and then other uh, things like period, amplitude, and wavelength. But I think for starters, let's just go over what kind of details we could look at with a transverse wave. And maybe we'll use an example of a uh, drop or drops in the water. Actually, instead of saying drops, let's just say water waves. We'll say that. So let's say these are sort of, when you imagine sort of, you know, the ocean, this is what's happening. We have these water waves, for example. So if we did this, then we could look at this as a top view. So if we looked at this from the top, let's say you had waves coming in. Well, these waves, maybe they look like this. So maybe they're going to be sort of straight lines. I'm trying to draw straight lines, but I'm not very good at drawing straight. But let's just say these right here were straight lines here. And this is like a top view of what the waves would look like. You know, you might see these things. And we actually call these wave fronts. So these black things right here would be wave fronts. That would be from a top view. And yet they might travel. So maybe they actually travel down that way, for example. These could be the wave fronts. So that's sometimes some people like to draw these things with wave fronts. And notice that the wave fronts here, these lines like this, they are perpendicular to the direction of travel here. So I'm going to write that down like this. So I'm going to say perpendicular. That's the mathematical shortcut. It's a little you know, angle thing like this here. It's perpendicular. Uh, maybe I'll make it really clear here. So when we want to say perpendicular, we're going to say, in open bracket here, we're going to say perpendicular to travel direction. So whichever way the wave travels, the wave fronts are going to be at 90 degrees, so perpendicular to that direction. So in this case, these are the wave fronts. That's what it looks like if you're in a plane uh, flying over the ocean. Maybe you're coming in for landing in Copenhagen, where I live. And when you're coming in for landing, you see these waves. The waves look like straight lines like this. Those are wave fronts. But some people also like to draw them. Instead of doing wave fronts, some people like to draw just what we call rays. So maybe you see them drawn like this right here. So maybe those right there, we're going to call these the rays. Okay, rays. And still, the direction of travel is still down this way. So do you notice that the rays here, they are parallel to the direction of travel. So that's the key thing here. So the rays are, this is the mathematical symbol we use, parallel to direction of travel. So that's the difference here. Wave fronts are like this, rays are like that. But I mean, these are all the same sort of thing here. They're just showing the same idea here. Now we could also look at this from the side. So if we look at this from the side, what we can do then is uh, maybe I'll draw the wave uh, this way now. So this time I'm gonna draw it like this. Up and down and up and down. If I could draw correctly, this would look perfectly the same. So you could sort of copy one of these and it would be the same as this. I didn't quite draw it beautifully, but I think you get the idea. It's something that goes up like this. In mathematics, we could say this is sinusoidal because we could draw this and we could actually use a sine curve or even cosine in order to model this graph. But the important thing I want to show you is this. Down here, we have these things called troughs. That's what they're often called. A trough, that's like a little place. Uh, I mean, uh, I've been on a farm, for example, and uh, when they fed the pigs, for example, they would put the food in a trough. So that's sort of a little place to put stuff in. Well, in this case, the bottom of a wave is the, called the trough, whereas the top of the wave is called a crest. That's like the top part. And of course, well, you have everything in the middle. So if you're surfing, for example, maybe you want to stay near the top of the crest here, at least when you first start surfing. Keep in mind, these waves then would maybe travel to the right or something like that. Okay, so there's troughs and there are crests. So that's just to show you some features of transverse um, waves. Now, what if I showed you something from longitudinal? This right here, we've done this before, I just want to reiterate. So let's say this was, for example, a uh, sound in air. So if we're looking at sound in air, then it would do something like this. Let's say we'd have these air molecules here. That's what these black things that here represent. So these are here, these are air molecules. 
and we talked about this before I'm just going to show you sort of formally here again so this right here we have places where we have what's called compression that's where there's more air molecules together and we have areas over here that are called rarefaction so let's look at these two different examples okay let's look at these uh, transverse waves and let's look at these longitudinal waves and we'll go back and look at this little animation we were looking at this before so I'm going to show you this right here this is water waves so those are transverse and if we had water dropping in the like water drops dropping in some water here those are create disturbances here and you notice these are here would travel this way but what's not so obvious then is what this would really look like if you're in it. So at least this, I mean, I can rotate this view slightly. I know it's a little cartoony thing, but you can see that there are these, for example, this is a crest up here, and down at the bottom, that's a trough down here. Now, why is it that the amplitude or the, the height of these waves here is getting smaller and smaller? That's because this is a realistic situation, and waves don't allow it to go perfectly. In other words, there is something called damping. So some energy is lost, which means the wave itself is smaller and smaller as it travels to the right. And we're going to be learning about damping in some videos coming up as well. But just to show you, though, that this is a side view of what would happen in the water. But if we looked at the top view, this allows us to see sort of like these. If we, if we only looked at a little piece, just like a little square right here, just... Let's say we only looked at a little square right here. We would see places where there's a trough, and maybe this is a crest, and maybe this is a trough again, and so on. So those are places where you know we could even draw the wave fronts if we wanted to by drawing these sort of straight lines here, and another one here, and another one here. Or maybe we could only draw wave fronts as the tops of the waves, so maybe that would be only here and here. There's a lot of different ways of representing this. But I just wanted to show you at least that that's how that could be done. And again, with sound, same sort of thing. These are waves going through. We could still rotate this to show the, um, well, the sound itself is harder to see because the sound doesn't do like what the water one did. Over here, for example, where if there's a side view and there's a top view, sound itself is just, um, well, it's a longitudinal wave, which means there's a dis placement there is a disturbance in these air molecules that's why I think it's better to show these particles I think that's better to show so these particles for example no matter how I rotate it it still shows that these particles are being moved but there's no net movement of them remember they just sort of they just sort of wiggle back and forth but this wave itself travels to the right okay, so I'm hoping that that at least helps to put things together and we can use some of these things now in the next video, I'm going to show you much more detail about uh, some of these features. So we're going to talk about things like amplitude and period and wavelength.